Hello fellow leggers, you are joining us in London's West End at the Theatre Royal Haymarket. And there's no income tax, no VAT, no money back and no guarantee that this is going to be any good. So we are seeing Only Fools and Horses, the, the musical. musical. So stick around to hear our thoughts and find out how many stars. And whether it's break a leg or leg it. And Horses, the musical, a British musical, has landed here in London's West End. Yes. What do we need to know? Well, it's based on the UK's most beloved sitcom of all time, written originally by John Sullivan. And John was working on this musical adaptation at the time of his death. Okay. But the writing reins have now fallen to his son, Jim Sullivan, and comedian actor Paul Whitehouse, who also stars as Grandad in the piece. Okay. Contributing to the show's original score of 21 songs are comedy legend duo Chaz and Dave, okay. even though one of those died recently as well. So they're not having much of a, oh, a no. such a spell of good luck here, but I'm sure a lot of the work was well, already done. Well, this is done. great then to catch up and reminisce and to really appreciate the good work of John Sullivan and Chaz and Dave, right? Yeah, and I think that's the point. It's nostalgic. I mean, it's this show ran from the early 1980s all the way into the 2000s and, you know, has some of the most memorable sitcom moments ever. Which iconic. Is, like, iconic. Going to be yeah. Recreated in this musical, hopefully. Now, the cast includes Tom Bennett as Del Boy, he's star of the E4 series Phone Shop and the upcoming Elton John biopic Rocket Man. Okay. Um, also, playing Rodney in this show is Ryan Hutton, who's making his West End debut, which is phenomenal. Uh, you may also recognise um, Diane Pilkington's name. She's a former Glinda in Wicked. Okay. And we last saw her in Young Frankenstein. Um, what else do we need to know about the space? Director choreographer is Caroline J. Ranger. Now, Caroline did a UK tour of The Commitments um, and, and was associate director under Jamie Lloyd when it was here in the West End. It's two acts. It's in previews. Not entirely sure how long it's going to run, but we'll find out for you and let you know. So we will be getting an interview breakdown. Stick around for that. And also stick around to the end to find out our thoughts and how many stars. We're back, fellow leggers, because it is the interval, which means it is time for the breaker leggers. 30, 30 second, second interval, interval breakdown. Go! What do you think? Wow. Just wow. Is that good? Everything that could possibly be wrong about a production of this scale, charging this amount of money, is present in this piece of theatre. Forgettable, and I hope I forget it. I'm probably going to need therapy about you. There's so much wrong with it. There's so much that it's trying to be. It's got so much to live up to. Some of the performances are great and how you expect them to be, but the piece is just flawed and broken and has been... Leggers, we have come to the end of Only Fools and Horses, the musical. So, Legger Simon, what did you make of that? Well, to paraphrase a quote from the show and do my best granddad impression. It's that bad. That bad. Literally, I, I, I really struggle to think of a time where I have had all of my worst fears realised. Now, when you hear the Dune and Only Fools and Horses musical and you know how beloved it is and you have all those fantastic memories of those quotable moments and those infamous, iconic sitcom, you know, scenes, and then you, you hear that they're, they're going to do something with it and you start to worry. You think, oh God, that could be terrible. Well, Leggers, in my opinion, it's all of those things and worse. I was so hopeful for this. I think, um, so it's so well known. It's so iconic, the characters are so well defined, it's spanned over such a long period of time, there's quotable lines, quotable moments, so this, you know, it's, it's already up there in terms of having a lot to live up to. And I just, I, I don't get it, the great, great thing about this was just John Sullivan's work. The bits where they had his his text and his interactions, that was great, there was no need at all. I don't think it should have been Only Fools and Horses, the musical, 
It should just be no needles and horses, maybe on stage. Maybe having some bits I mean, as a bit of a, you know, to reminisce. I, I think that maybe would have it being a musical just doesn't work. It's an insult to musical theatre or the concept of what musical theatre is. The music was superfluous, and the only they're tune, not only superfluous, but bad. just bad, just downright, t completely. Am I, I, don't, I hate to use the word amateur because that's giving amateurs ba a bad name. Because but it was good like, amateur stuff. Yeah, and it, but it was like two people had got together in a pub, having never seen the show because none of never the, seen none a of, musical never se and never seen a musical never seen anything relating to the piece because all of the songs had nothing to do with character they drove the narrative no in no way narrative. whatsoever fizzled out at moments there was no applause there. at the end no like literally a, a couple of times song came to an end and the, it was so flat and deflated that it, it was just met with silence because it was so shoddy and then it didn't drive, it's just really superfluous. I Which feel is a shame because some of the actors, we'll come on to the actors in a bit, yeah. some of the actors are doing a really bloody good job and, I feel and really well cast. angry on their behalf. I mean, you all know Diane Pilkin to musical theatre fans out there and what a fantastic actress she is. She sang songs like For Good um, and she sang songs like Thank Goodness and Pop in Wicked, she's had this fantastic material to showcase her ability and in this she gets second rate drunken barroom sort of, you know, like bad karaoke material um, which is clearly delivered in a really, you know, great way but oh my god, it's just at a base level, I'm furious, like I feel actually furious about it. Yeah, it's not great fellow leggers, it's not great, um, so uh, there's the, the the direction for me also lacked any element of creativity or stagecraft being a musical. There was moments where they just popped into songs, the songs just came out of nowhere and the numbers were no good. There's a number of Del Boy at the near the opening did the kind of Doctor Hat and a cane and it, was, it wasn't even, some musicals are knowing, like the Book of Mormon, they know that they're taking the mickey. It tried to have its theater. one chorus line moment. It tried it to just, have that. It, it just doesn't, it didn't work. It, it just didn't land. A lot of the stuff just didn't land. Comedy didn't land. The music certainly didn't land. The performers were trying, and I think this is about the time to Come move on, on to, to, move on to performers. performers. Okay. So, star of the show, absolutely stealing. As far as an impersonation performance goes, is um, Ryan Hutton in the role of Rodney. It's his professional debut, and my God, yeah. he's brilliant. Like, right from word or, go, yeah. he's got Rodney down. And, but not Which just a down where skill. it's a carbon copy, but obviously he's working to new script as well, and he was still making that part his own. Mm. It was comfortable. Yeah. He was really good yeah. in, in his physicality, in his tone, in his intonations and inflections of, of vocals as well. He was great. Yeah, also um, Paul Whitehouse, an absolute surprise he in the role of granddad i mean was, unfortunately was, yeah. he's also co-writer um and you know sh stay away please but as a performer doing an he's impersonation brilliant. job he is fantastic yeah. it was like i mean uh, as a bit of a spoiler there's a cameo of uncle albert as well sorry if that's a spoiler for you but he plays both characters and he plays and it, do you know what it was almost spine chilling how close he was to him and to both of those <laughs> it's actors as if they were there both of those actors it's are as dead if they were there. but my god i couldn't believe i you know i actually especially the uncle albert moments i sort of had to remind myself that buster merrifield like, is dead have they got him on yeah like, and so he, that good he as did a performer. Re absolutely respect for that he yeah. did those um, actors absolutely proud he and they're did. magical actors yeah and he captured that essence yeah I mean I must say I, I was brought up on only fools and horses I know I've seen every episode of every series several times I can quote it so it holds a place in my heart now that is a risk and it just didn't pay off but I just wanted to validate the fact that I love the show you know I really do I, I really wanted to have a good time I think that's the problem there's a, a part of British almost heritage and legacy that mm -hmm. we are proud of or yeah. we should be proud of I think and you know we want it to do well I want this to do well I want this to run and run but no it won't if, it if, the, won't. if the mainstream critics don't savagely absolutely maul this to pieces I will be shocked 
shocked. I would be shocked. Um, there are also some other um, good performances. I thought um, you talked about Diane Pilkington already. Pippa Duffy as um, Cassandra, I thought also was brilliantly cast. Um, she played that extremely well. Yeah. Jeff Nicholson as Boise, I thought he did a great job as well. Standout for me was definitely Samantha Seeger as Marlene. She she totally well nailed captured. that impersonation role. You know, yes. absolutely. Um, Chris Keeley as Mickey Pierce again, safe hands. Um, this this whole piece also you've got to have a great Del Boy. I mean, you're recreating the most iconic. <laughs> sitcom character of all time and Tom Bennett misses the mark guys he absolutely misses the mark now what he is is a good cockney but he isn't a dull boy and when the others are so close it's really difficult what did save him again was John Sullivan's writing of the character all those classic lines the misinterpretation and understanding of meanings the using of foreign language in the wrong context that's still in there and there are ripples of murmurs from the audience where we got that and appreciated that but it was it. nothing to do with the delivery, delivery. a lot of it no. was just lost just fell on barren ground because of the way it was delivered uh, committed I can I can I can say he was definitely committed he's a committed performer but again that's so hard to fill um, there was another um, part also I wanted to talk about before we move on from Del Boy. I also really enjoyed, who was it who played uh, Trigger? Peter Baker playing Trigger, I thought he was great as well. Didn't enjoy him at all personally, but I'm glad you did. Um, given a really random number. Um, yeah. in terms of seeing what? the future like where the hell what was that about I mean, let's not try and justify the music here guys because there is no justification for this absolutely shocking score there are two songs that you know um, holding back the years is in there yeah, and lovely and lovely day by bill with us I, I have no idea why they're there. Yeah, what the purpose of them, I'm still going to be questioning. You I know, didn't get it. You know, you leave some pieces of. I, I had to remind. I had to pinch myself at several times physically during the performance and ask myself, is this really happening right now? Am I really here? Surely this, these decisions haven't been made. Surely this is all just a big joke. And we're going to get the punchline in a minute. And guys, it's not a joke. It's real. And. I'm just, I'm lost. I'm absolutely, I'm almost lost for words. I mean, not quite clearly, but almost lost for words. Okay, set, lighting. Set was fine. Okay, lighting. Lighting was fine. Fine. Use of projection. Fine, you know, much better elsewhere. Do you know what I'm surprised at? The tickets for this are not cheap, but that money's not particularly on stage. They've not gone all out with this. It's no lavish costumes. I imagine the costs are fairly minimal. Yes, the set moves on a revolve, but so doesn't everything. I mean, I mean the set, the, actually, that's, to be fair, the set was nicely orchestrated with almost like a double revolve. It moved quite nicely sometimes, although there were some really weird hiatus moments where I don't think they've quite got the timing of the whole show but together. But we are in previews. And it fell flat. But I, I guess the concept of that worked. It's just a shame none of the, the, a lot of the ensemble moments were very far back. I felt as if they could have come forward to another six to nine foot to the front of the stage. But hey, I guess you're probably wondering how many stars we're going to give Only Fools and Horses, well, the musical. Well, for Only Fools and Horses, the musical, currently playing at the Theatre Royal Haymarket London, we are going to give... One. One star, and that is because of some of those performances are really well cast. And it's a skill to be able to imitate somebody, you know, a well-known character. And they do it well. And uh, Yeah, and a, a few of them do it really, really well. But the musical? Yeah. The musical? The musical? The musical? No, yeah, just no. no. Stay at home, guys. Fire up Netflix and watch some of those classic episodes and keep the memories that you love from Only Fools and Horses. They're all there. They can't be bettered, and they're certain nothing added to them by the music in this musical. Now, saying that, there were people, there were a, a small pocket there of the audience of who were enjoying it, and I could tell they'd had, <laughs> yeah, definitely had a, a bit strict. So I think 
for a type of audience who maybe like this sort of Your stuff a lot. Your casual theatre goer, theater goer slash lot, heavy drinker. Who likes to rattle, who likes to leave halfway through the act to go to, to, the, go to the bar, bar and return not only with the with the drink but also packets of crisps. Yeah, I mean, Who are why checking not, their eh? phone throughout yeah, the performances. Go for it, guys. Not that we want a stereotype. No. But, but they, they were seem having to be a having a great, great time. time. And we wished we were them. We were you know, I wished them. I was having them. a great time. So, uh, who knows? And um, this does have appeal for some people and it yeah. could be you and if that is you let us know down below maybe we've missed something we say this a lot maybe we've missed something because yeah, hey, maybe that's just what I think just what he thinks and what I think but what do you think let us know comment below if you like what we do hit subscribe and you'll see more of us bringing you the latest reviews this is uh, this is trying to resuscitate the show right here. Oh, they're too late they're too late guys but we're the breaker leggers and we'll catch you again soon bye, bye.